Hey everybody, welcome to the virtual showroom discussion today. I'm Eric Gorenson, and we're going to talk a lot about virtual showrooms today. Let's talk a little bit about my background. Uh, I am a certified kitchen designer through the NKBA. I've actually uh, been doing kitchen and bath design since the mid-90s, so this is my 27th year doing this. So this is something that uh, I have gone from uh, the hand drafting stages all the way up into the virtual showroom today. So this is kind of my take on how you can use the virtual showroom because I'll be honest, anybody can go out and buy a set of VR glasses and plug them into their computer and start using it, but I want to dive into what makes it a virtual showroom and how you can actually use it. So my experience in the background of, of what I have done is I've gone from working back in the 90s in home centers up to owning my own business and doing my own kitchen and bath showroom. And then I even got into uh, residential mixed use commercial stuff as well. So I was doing high rises, condos and that kind of thing. So I've worked with anything from, you know, very, very high end homeowners to, um, you know, big companies like Skanska and big high rise complexes where I'm ordering 250 units for the cabinetry all within a few weeks. So. A lot of these things can be used with many different clients and really to be honest, your type of client that you're working with because all of these things relate to that. So let's dive in here to what I would call what is a virtual showroom. What I call the virtual showroom and I think it's still being defined out there as technology goes on, this is kind of fun. So what you can do with these VR glasses, so my, my how I started out with this is I got a very nice gaming laptop and got VR glasses and started playing around with it and said, okay, what can we do with this to help? I think everybody wants to close projects quicker. They want to get more information out to their clients and stand out from everybody. So what's great with that is that you can do this and use your clients as part of this virtual showroom. So let's back up just a little bit. For me, what the virtual showroom can do for you is it can make your showroom footprint smaller. And what I mean by that is you can actually go through and have less square footage of big displays and actually show people what it feels like to be inside their own space with all of the things that they're going to feel comfortable with. Because really when it comes down to working with as a designer, to a homeowner or a designer to a builder or whatever that relationship is, one, there has to be a great trust relationship there, as well as you've got to be able to communicate what the project is that's coming up. So if you're designing out a master bathroom or a kitchen or maybe even just a little wet bar area, all of these things here work with this theory. And so let's dive into this a little bit more. See, when you're talking about showrooms, and this is the challenge that I always had as a showroom manager. If I've got a massive showroom, styles right now are changing so much faster than they were years ago. If you think about it, 10 years ago, we were having some, the best way for people to communicate kitchen and bath ideas was magazines. You would see it on the beginnings of television. You know, you, we had this old house for the last, you know, 40 years. But Home and Garden TV hadn't really come out. We weren't using Pinterest and Hows and all these things right now like we are. So when you would see a project, so let's say you designed a beautiful project that was going to get published. So you would work with your client. It would get built out. Maybe nine months later from the start of the project, you had some great photographs of this project. So then an in, a magazine would get interested. And so maybe three, six, nine months later, that groundbreaking project that you did got published. So now you're a year to a year and a half from the time that the project started to where it showed up out for people to look at it. And so then as styles changed, it took a lot longer for that process to go. Well, nowadays it's pretty crazy. You can sit there and have that project finished up six to nine months later, but you can have that on, on, on Facebook, House, Pinterest, whatever, Instagram, whatever you're doing it, now that groundbreaking project is out there in half the time. 
So I think moving forward with technology, what we're going to see is we're going to see styles change much quicker. And you're also seeing retailers jump in a lot quicker. You know, it used to be that a style would be out and then you would see, you know, the, the Home Depots, the Targets, and all of those guys out there would jump on with their big manufacturers, you know, a couple years later. Now I'm seeing stuff that's really starting to get picking up nationally, and all of a sudden it's in Target within weeks. So I think moving forward, we're going to see a lot faster design changes. What does that mean to us as kitchen and bath designers? It means a lot because what's going to happen is, is that maybe we're going to put showrooms in. You know, let's say last year you put a, a really gray on gray on white cabinet display in. And now if you went to the kitchen and bath industry show, you see color everywhere. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's appliances or, or whatever else. These styles are changing much quicker. And so what can happen now is if you've got, if you're in an area where it's more traditional and people don't change often, sometimes these styles are going to change faster than you can even change your showroom. So if you put in a kitchen display last year, you were hoping to get five to seven years out of it. If you didn't design the showroom around the current style changes, you're going to be caught left in the dust a little bit. And I've done a lot of talks about, you know, the smaller showrooms and things like that. But the big thing here to keep in mind is, is that you need to design these showrooms so you can swap things out quicker. And that's where I bring the virtual showroom into play here. Because what happens is, is that uh, you, know, you can adjust it quicker without spending that hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year trying to tear out displays or update things as styles change. So that's kind of the first part of dealing with a virtual showroom is really, to be honest, why? Is this expensive? What do you need? Let's dive into this. Really the thing with a virtual showroom is, is it's not so much about the displays you have. Now, it's, it, there's a lot of different things to deal with on this. Let's dive into the first one. You've got to have with a virtual showroom, you've got to have cabinet manufacturers that build really good 2020 catalogs. And let's be honest, there are some manufacturers out there that do a great job of dealing with their, with their catalog, and it works great. There's no problems. There's other ones out there that build beautiful cabinets, but they have not invested in their 2020 catalogs, and that's going to hurt you if you're dealing with that brand and a virtual kitchen, because if it's not showing the right door styles, if it's not showing the right colors, if it's not showing the right textures, you as a designer are going to struggle with it, and your homeowner or contractor you're working with is going to struggle with it as well. So first of all, you need to have you know, the right partners there. Second of all, I'd make sure that your partners you work with are somewhat limited. For me, I think moving forward with a kitchen and bath showroom, if you've got over three or four different uh, cabinet companies in there, this can get really confusing. And it's confusing for the designer, it's confusing for the, for the homeowner and the contractor. So that's my personal belief. There's other people that think differently, I respect that. But for me, anything more than three or four companies in a showroom, this can be a challenge with this moving forward. And we'll get a little into that a little bit later because that can be a little bit more of a problem. So is this expensive? No. Let's talk about the computer itself. For me in 2020, my personal opinion is I always buy gaming computers to run my 2020 with. Why is that? Gaming computers as a whole are designed to be running video games. So they're designed to be running high heat all the time, fast, fast working computer. When you've got a fast working computer like that, it's going to be more durable. I can't tell you how many computers I've bought over the last 20 years for doing 2020 work with. And you know something? The ones that I thought I was getting a great deal on, I burned them up. I burned processors up. I have done all of it. You know, I had a while there where I was doing a laptop a year because it just couldn't handle me pushing 2020 all the way through every day. Why is that? I was buying, you know, regular laptops that weren't doing it. Now that I've switched over to what the new gaming computers are, they're lasting a lot longer. And I'll tell you what, uh, I was off doing a presentation in Boston here for the uh, NRLA a little bit earlier this year. And a designer was in there uh, with his employer, and they were going through this, and he was shocked at how fast 
my computer was using 2020. And I just handed the mouse and said, here you go, go for it. It is amazing the struggles out there that people have when you're using a, the wrong computer for the wrong, it's the wrong tool for the wrong job. So my computer that I've been doing my VR stuff with is a $1,000 Best Buy laptop that is a gaming computer. So really, we're not talking something very expensive there. We're just talking about something to get you going. And so I tend to buy, when I buy my laptop, I'm buying towards the top end of what 2020 is requiring you to use, but you've also got to think about what VR glasses are going to, are going to mean for you as well. So that is really good. So I see you guys have questions coming through, and I will get those at the very end in our question and answer session, so sit tight. We'll get into those, those details there. So when we're going through this, I'm, it's working out really well for me, but you've got to think about how you're going to use the VR glasses with this as well. So I went out and bought the, uh, the 2020 Oculus. Uh, from 2020, I bought the Oculus Rift. Now the thing that you've got to think about when you're buying this is you've got to make sure that the laptop or desktop computer you're buying has the right ports to get that. And I'm not going to get so deep in the weeds, but make sure that there's enough USB and quality USB ports that will work with that. So that's kind of the key that you're looking with. Mine here had the right amount. It's working great. And I've been able to do lots of presentations with it. It's worked out very, very well. So moving forward that. So I've got a $1,000 computer. I've got a four or $500 set of VR glasses, depending on which one you get. And now you've got something going. This is where this starts to pay off for you because you're really going. And you've got a really fast computer to do 2020 with. So even when you're not doing anything with the VR glasses to do a virtual kitchen, you can still design this out. So all of you that have not worked with anything on virtual reality with this, how this works is you'll design out your kitchen like you normally do in 2020. So you're going to draw it out, get it all done, get it all detailed to the level of detail that you know your employer, your company, whatever does. Now what you do is you're going to create that 360 degree video so you can spin around. It's really that simple. So get that. You can test that on your computer before you even get into VR. And then depending on which glasses you use, you'll either save it into the folder that they want that to be in, or you'll upload it into the glasses. That's a very simple process. So really now what you're doing is you've got VR glasses, you've got this, you've got your system. Now the other part of the, is the expensive, it's really not. The other thing that I would recommend for everybody is to be saving everything into the cloud. This is kind of one of the other things out there, whether you're using Google, whether you're using um, any one of the uh, different cloud services out there, you could be using the, the Microsoft Cloud, whatever you're using at, create your system because that is the basis for what we're going to do with this next. Because what I want to be able to do is if in your organization, and this could be two designers in an office, it could be 100 different showrooms across the country, it's all scalable, but it all means the same thing. When you start to create this virtual showroom, this is how this is going to come together, and I want you to be able to share it and be able to create your own virtual catalog. So we're going to get into that here in a second because not only do you want to take you know, your stuff that you're building right now, you want to be able to do it so it makes sense for everybody. And so we're going to talk a little bit about creating a catalog here. So the theory of this is let's say Mrs. Smith walks into your showroom and you're going to design out her kitchen for her. So you go through your design process. You got everything ready to go, you sell the project, you get things ordered, you've already created your virtual files to do that. So let's say she designed a, a white shaker kitchen with marble countertops and a in a you know a nice subway backsplash. You know, super common out out the door for many people across the country. So what I would do is I would save this into Mrs. Smith's folder and, and have that online where you've got that folder. And to be honest, I don't save anything in 2020 because I actually put this into the cloud because I always like things to be backed up. That's the other part of this. And by the way, and I'm going to take a little side note here. I had a design firm I was working with in the Seattle area. I live in Portland, Oregon. 
and everybody went home for the holidays. And a lot of the people left their laptops in the showroom because they didn't want to take work with them home for the holidays. Well, New Year's Day, somebody breaks in, steals four laptops, smash and grab. Four designers lost everything they owned in that. I've also seen showrooms actually burn down, have a fire, the building next door caught on fire, took their building down, wiped out everything. To me, if you don't have it saved in three places, it doesn't exist. And with the time and money that you've spent into that, I'd make sure you have everything triple backed up because that way you're safe. So the cool thing what you can do with this is now you can start to create your virtual showroom. What do I mean by that? So you take Mrs. Smith's project. It's done. Everything's cool. Now you save that into a common folder that everyone can use. So this would be a folder that you can put up in the cloud that people can download into their machine or into their VR glasses or however they're going to load it up. But you can create it as a shared folder with everybody that is white painted shaker kitchens. So you're going to put that in there and you can say you shape painted white backsplash or marble with white backsplash, however you want to describe that out and build your catalog. So this works pretty well with that because you can sit there and create every single client is a new virtual kitchen. And that can really give you so much more to show to a client. And to be honest, if you're battling up against home centers or the um, you know import kitchen market people out there that are hurting into uh, a showroom's you know, design business, you know, this is something that's going to make you stand out on the customer service level of things. And so that is really fun. So how does it help you? How does it help you? It can help you in a ton of different ways. One thing I can do with this, so if I'm working with a builder, for instance, and let's dive off into the people that deal with the with a custom home builder, a remodeler, or anything else, you can build catalogs for that builder. So if you've got a remodel guy, you can actually get him loaded up with your designs. So you're, let's say you're dealing with a company called ABC Construction. They're a remodeling company. The great thing with ABC Construction is you can sit there and partner up with them and say, hey, I'm going to be your cabinetry provider. I'm going to be your designer on all your projects. Great. So they go out and meet with their clients. You can roll in with your laptop, the virtual reality glasses, in their home. You can start to show people where they're the most comfortable what these things look like. Oh, you want to have a white painted kitchen? Hold on. What's your, uh, what is your Wi-Fi? Or if you've got a, a way to download it onto your computer that's fast, great. You can sit there and spend time in their own home and walk them through. Now, this works with a builder as well. And this is what I really like about this. If you're working with a custom home builder that has 15 or 20 plans, you can work through and create, create kitchens and work on designs. So this is where this really starts to pay off. So you're sitting there. The room is framed up. You've got this beautiful lofted ceiling in there. It's gorgeous. And the homeowner, like many people, can't visualize what this is going to look. You can sit there create a 365 degree view of their current plan. You can stand in that same location. You can mark it out on the floor before they even show up out there where that location is. You can put them in VR glasses standing there and feel like they're in that space. And when they take this, the glasses off, guess what? They can now look at what that space is. So this not only works in a showroom environment, this can work out there with a home builder on the job site at a job site meeting as well. See, these are things that can really push through and make a different buying experience with technology. And it's really fun. I've, I had a great experience working with these VR glasses for all ages. I had young students coming up with them when I was doing these uh, seminars in Boston here in February up to, you know, divisional presidents for cabinet companies with the glasses on and having their mind blown away of what you can do with this stuff. And the great thing is, is you can sit there and pull these designs if you want to keep them simple. If you want to fully detail them out so you have every little thing on the plan, it doesn't matter. It's all going to show up in that VR experience for people. Now, it's not really set up yet where you're going to be able to open doors and drawers and stuff like that, but I think down the road, that's where technology is going to be going one day. But just to be able to stand there, look around, look up and down, you can in upload the flooring situation 
you know, if they've got hardwood, if they've got whatever they're doing, you could add that in there and use your imagination of what that expectation is. And I tell you what, it is a deal closer for clients because they see it and they go, wow, okay. Now here's the next part. How does it help you when you've got that rough client? And I mean that rough client that wants to do something that maybe isn't a smart idea. So they want to put, you know, maybe they've got uh, six inches between the cooktop in the in, the, in, a, in a refrigerator, there are nine inches where it's really tiny, or they, they're trying to push you into a design situation where you've got the whole thing there. So let's say the pantry is too close to this, or you're creating that little cave. It doesn't matter. If you're creating that little cave, now you can put on the glasses and show that you know, you've got a heck of a mess here. This is how you, know, you can go. This is what it's going to create. And I tell you what, it is great for making people understand distance between an island, you know, what's it look, you know, scale really shows with these glasses. What I like about that is that helps you in your design process because you can get through this stuff so much quicker. And really, that's part of the key to this is blasting through and making this quicker. Because if you can communicate it, get the feel across, and have three or four less design revisions, man, all we're doing is buying ourselves time, and time with everything means money to us. So let's go over to the next slide here. This is where we're speeding up the process. I think with most clients, if you go in and do the virtual glasses early on in the presentation, so you go through, for me, my process, I've gone out for remodels, for instance, I'll go out and measure it, get all the information, have that first meeting, we'll kind of get a door style and you know color picked out, great. We kind of get the feel of where this is going to go. I go back to my showroom or office. I design it out. I set up for that next presentation, whether it's in my office or wherever, or at the job site, you know, contractor's showroom, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters, though, is, is that you can sit there and now present to them and show them exactly what your thoughts were. The cool thing is, is that you're not going to probably have to take as many swipes at, well, what if we did this? What if we do that? Because now they're going to start to feel it. And I think those customers that are really challenged by trying to look at an elevation or maybe even a perspective view, this is really going to give control back to them for what they feel and what they see. And so that's the great part of that. So I think that speeds up the process. And to be honest, I think it really does one more thing that's really important is it stops mistakes. And this is where I've seen the expensive part of kitchen and bath design. The expensive part of kitchen and bath design is when we make mistakes. And it doesn't really matter if it's a homeowner that misunderstood. I'll tell you one of my experiences that I had as a designer. I had a manufacturer, not to blame manufacturers, but these things happen when they have cabinet colors that describe the color. So let's call it maple light. And they called the stain color light. So one of my employees that I had years ago was working with a cabinet company that had this light color. The problem was it wasn't the lightest color. It was a medium color. But since they'd been around for so long, light used to be their kind of light color and they had a dark and they just had light dark. The problem was is that when that homeowner was in communication with the designer, they were talking two different colors because one was light and one was the color light. So what happened was is they went through the whole process and the wrong color kitchen got ordered. And to be honest, that is the worst situation for just about any designer is getting the wrong color or door style out there. And so those are things that can be somewhat addressed by dealing with this because they're now going to see it. And if that catalog was built correctly where it shows the colors fairly well, it's going to show it there and you've got more communication with that. Now, here's other details. This is the one thing I love about using 2020 is that if you've got a decent catalog, it's going to show the molding details. You're going to put them in there and you can show it. So you could actually show how those moldings will go around the refrigerator, how they're going to go around something else, how the light balance is going to look. So I think this is where it's going to stop a lot of mistakes. When you, when you show somebody a perspective on a piece of paper, guess what? 
you can't really see those finer details that well. And I don't care how you're printing it out. I have a printer which I print all my designs for clients. It's on 11 by 17. I can get a lot out of that. But those still little details don't show up really well. With this, now you're putting them inside the design. So if that light rail feels bulky on paper, when you put it on the glasses and they're looking around in there, they're going to see it, but they're going to see it like they're standing there. So I think the finer details, moldings, finished ends even, um, details around an island, the scale of the project, you know, if you've got that client wanting to take cabinets to nine, nine and a half feet high, you put virtual reality glasses on there and you've already warned them that in the scale of their room that might seem a little tall, it's going to seem a little tall. And this is where stopping these mistakes can happen. The other thing is, is that uh, it kind of forces you to have, you know, a, a design process throughout this that's going to keep that. Now, one little thing that I do on my designs, uh, as I'm designing, so let's say we're talking about Mrs. Smith again. One thing that will help you with the, with the stopping mistakes is that you can sit there and design out their first initial design like we talked about where we were presenting it. You can save that as design one. So I'll go, you know, ABC Construction, Smith Kitchen 1. That's the first one. My next set of revisions, I don't care if I'm changing three things. It's two. It's three. I do that through every perspective. I do that with every virtual file I save. I have it numbered correspondingly with that plan. So first off, when you go back to that, you always know which one the latest one is. And then, of course, when, I, when we come to a design that's an agreement, I call it final. And then all of my drawings that I create from that are final. So what that does is it gives you a nice little catalog of going back and forward. The nice thing with that, though, is if you've got a virtual kitchen that you created for meeting number one, and you've got something at uh, meeting number six where you're presenting stuff, you can show the difference between one and six, and I tell you what, it can save you a ton of time because if Mrs. Smith goes, you know, I know we headed down this road and I really thought well, this is the way I was going to go. I really liked it when we had the peninsula instead of the island. You've got it saved. And you've got it back there. And you can literally on the, on the, on the spot right there go back and go, here you go. Let's go back to number three and revisit that again. So anything like that saves you from design time because the more drawings you do, whether or not you're charging for the cut to the customer, if you're doing it on your own time, whatever system you have out there, it still saves you time, and it gets you the process quicker, which means you can get to the sale quicker, and more importantly, it's a cleaner job when it shows up for install at the site. So that's that kind of the key of this here. So moving forward from that, this is where the mistakes can really help with a good process, because it'll keep you where you're making money. Now. Let's talk about set and client expectations. Door styles are tough. They are, especially if you've got a great line. Now, one of the keys to a virtual showroom is to have a ton of samples. What I did uh, when I created my own system here a number of years ago, before we even got into the VR stuff, this is before that, I had a, a, a very small 700 square foot showroom, and I had a dozen designers out there working. The key to this was having lots and lots and lots of door samples and lots of color blocks. Here's how I set my client expectation with that. So with the virtual showroom, it makes it even easier. What I did was, as I went through the process here, met with the client, figured out kind of maybe door style colors. We looked through all of those. I, when I had my presentation for them to do the virtual showroom presentation where I sat there, used the VR glasses, I had the door style in my hand. I had the color block there if I didn't have the right door and color combination so they could touch it and feel it as they're looking through it because that way you get that physical touch and they can feel what it looks like, see what it looks like, and go through that. So when it came to the sale of this process, this is where this worked out well. So I would go through and I would take this door style and say, all right, are we good? This is what we're, you know, I would sit there literally and confirm this in front of them. I would have them sign the back of that door sample. Now I could have a dozen signatures because it's a popular kitchen on the back of it. Doesn't matter. I want an initial 
on the back of that door sample. So guess what? We've now documented that. And what you can do is take a picture of that, put it in your folder, all of those things, and the color block sample if you didn't have that combination. In a perfect world, it's all in one piece, so you can see all the little intricate details of that. Then what I would do is I would actually quarantine that so that couldn't leave the office. I'd keep it back behind the, out of the showroom. We could use it for an in-showroom in, in, in meeting, but it would go back to that. I had my uh, office manager managing that part of it, so we would quarantine that door. So that keeps that in there, works really well, and until the project is delivered and sold, you can actually see that that's protected, and once the client's seen it, it's installed, it's going, everybody's happy, then you can release that back out into the showroom again. So if you've got a popular door style, you might want to have a couple around there. And then the other key with this is stay on top of your samples. Wood samples, natural cherries and stuff, I change those out every six months to a year. I did not want woods to change, and I literally had Every couple months, we would go through the showroom and make sure that no outdated samples got shoved back in the showroom. Because there's nothing worse than going through this whole virtual process. You've got everything ready, client signed, guess what? You just based everything off a discontinued or outdated sample. Now you've set those expectations incorrectly with the client. So the other thing is too, with a virtual showroom, you can have, you can get away with this with a six foot display. If you've got a six, maybe eight foot display of a kitchen, for instance, or even a bathroom, you can go through the whole entire design process. You can walk them over to that, show, that small vignette of a kitchen. You can walk through and say, all right, Mrs. Smith, this is the drawer system here. This is a dovetail, as you can see, they're sanded. You've got undermount glides. You can go through that whole process and show them what to expect with that. And for most people out there, when they go through that, they're now comfortable with it because they've also stood in the inside of this kitchen and now they're really feeling good about it because virtually they've done it. So one other thing I want to talk about with the setting the client expectations, if I'm doing this in a showroom, I'm going to clear out a space in my showroom for this part of the meeting if I'm doing this as a presentation area. I'm going to map out probably a, a seven or eight foot square area, and I'll be honest, I'm going to put it up in the front side of the room where everybody can see me doing it, especially if you're in a lumber yard or if you've got windows out to the street, if you're in an urban environment. I want people to be coming by, seeing us, whatever they can through the window to do that because that's free advertising. And when you put these things on, there's safety to think about as well. Because what you don't want to do is be in an office environment. You want people to be able to put those VR glasses on and move around in an area that's pretty decent. Because then they can feel the space. Because they're going to wander around in it a little bit themselves. Even though it's, you're not going to be able to walk around it like it's a house in virtual reality, you're going to be able to feel what's going on. So you want to create just a nice, safe space. The other thing you can do, I've seen people stand up and do it. I've also seen people use the VR glasses sitting in a very nice, comfortable chair then you don't have to have as big a space on it. You just want to make sure that you've got the proper rules and procedures because when somebody's in this VR world, they have no idea what's going on around them. So that's one of those safety things I just want to make sure everybody realizes that they're going to be kind of immersed in this. And when they're in there, you need to be standing there and kind of guiding them. If they're standing there, you better be standing next to them, have your hand next to them. Maybe you're, you're, you're just there to make sure that they don't step into your computer or trip over a chair. So safety is key with this. So really, the safest way would be to have them sit down in a very nice, comfortable chair so they can be comfortable and realize that they're in a virtual world and do this. But the problem is, if you want them to spin around and look at the other side of it, they're going to have to stand up and move around a little bit. So something to consider throughout this process. That is a key right there. So I want to make sure that we touch on that safety side and the planning side because that works out pretty well. So using it, got this cute little graphic here, somebody out of the job site using it really well. There are so many different ways you can do this for using this virtual kitchen. You can do a virtual showroom for every one of these rooms of these clients' homes. So if you're working on the bar area to the any room that you're designing in 2020, you can do this with and set it up. Now, some of the tricks to how you use it, make sure that you've got the right catalog set up. 
I actually went through and created a textures catalog of my own that for all my people to use. You know, you have some of your favorites that you like to use as a designer. I've gone through and created, especially for that first presentation where you haven't worked out all, maybe you haven't gone tile shopping yet, maybe you haven't done all these things yet. If you create that folder on your own system or in the cloud for other people, if you've got that, it's a really great way to do that because you can go through and create those textures for 2020 and have those ready to go so you can import them and, and be ready to use it. And if you've got great manufacturers that are, that are giving you the JPEGs and stuff to do that, it just makes it seem more real. So the more times you can use an appliance from, you know, that you can use that brand appliance and put it in there and make this seem more real, it's great. If you can use a, a Caesar Stone countertop or whatever branded, and I'm just using a brand as an example, but if you want to do that and use whatever material, Constantino, whoever, use it and get it as dialed in and as accurate as possible with that. Spend some time, put the right paint colors on the walls, you know, make those details. And a fun one that I do as well with the virtual kitchen, if they've got a pet or a dog or a cat, throw a little bowl in over there someplace for them. Show that it's their place. So the more you can make this feel like it's their system, the better off you are. And the more that you're going to you know, the better chance you're going to have of closing this deal here. So now here's the great part of this, and I want to make sure this is the one of the most important parts, and we talked a little bit about it, but this is the most important part of taking all this data we're creating. So if you've got six or seven clients that you're working with, and you've got all these potential virtual displays, if you have a system within your company to put this together, and I don't care if it's just one person or 100, if you create this catalog system that is monitored and kept track of, I tell you what, you can create the biggest virtual display for your company. How you can use these too is, you know, you've got uh, Mrs. Smith walking in to start the project, and she walks into your small showroom, looks around and says, well, you know, I really like this style of kitchen. And Murphy's Law says, it's not the kitchen that you've got. Oh, no problem. You can go in and say, oh, so you're looking for a rift cut mahogany slab panel horizontal grain. Great. Let me show you what that looks like. It doesn't matter what you have with people. It's accessible for everyone to grab. So you can grab that door style, that color, show them what it looks like, and say, this is a client that we recently did. Guess what? It shows that you understand the style. It shows that you're able to pull it off. And more importantly, they now feel comfortable. And that puts you a leg up on your competition right now because I'll be honest, most people are not dealing with this. There's some cutting edge people out there doing it. But the more important thing with that too is that you're seeing now in ads all over the place, manufacturers using virtual reality in their ads on television. So now you're going to start to get things that seem quote unquote, more normal. This is not going to be the craziness of, oh, wow, you're going to put these on? So you're going to have less people there. It's going to seem more normal for everybody out there in the design process. And with these virtual displays, you can now have your showroom displays a little bit more dialed down. Because I'll be honest, homeowners walking in or even remodelers walking into a showroom, if you've got outdated displays, you know, let's say you've got that uh, cherry natural kitchen that's a decade old that looks nothing like the kitchen that's going to show up when, that, when, it, when it gets delivered. Or there was a manufacturer that I worked with that in their showroom that you went into, they had not stayed on top of their displays. They had a cherry kitchen that had been so beaten down by UV that it looked like driftwood. I'll be honest, if you have a customer walking in and the displays look worse than what they had at home that they're thinking about replacing you, you've got a rough chance of trying to get that thing developed into a building relationship where they think that they're confident that you're going to make it. Because if you can't keep your house in order, you're going to have a rough time getting their house in order. So that's one of the things that, uh, that can be tough. Now here's the other part of this, marketing this. This is probably one of the most important things out of all this. You're working with your clients, you're selling bathroom, kitchens, whatever packages you're doing, you're selling interior design service, whatever you're selling out there. 
this is kind of what this is. Now you want to market it. How do you market it? Well, use your clients if they want to use them to help promote your services. How do you do that? There's nothing like asking Mrs. Smith as she's standing or sitting there, and it doesn't matter. This is the great thing with this. It doesn't matter if they're 24 years old doing their first house or if they're 84 years old and they're doing their house, their forever house in there. It doesn't matter. They could be in a wheelchair. They could be seven feet tall. It all doesn't matter. You can set this up from their perspective. The cool part is, is that you can sit there, ask them to take a picture, and see if you can use it on social media. It is super powerful to give your client, to text over to them, a picture of them using virtual reality glasses, looking at their new kitchen, and them sending that out to their friends on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever else they're doing, signing up, and you're now harnessing their social media. Great, tag everybody in it. They're happy, they're like, wow, look at this, look at this new thing I'm doing. They're feeling hip, and guess what? You just got a ton of free advertising about it, and they're talking about their new exciting project. Everybody wins. So you can actually make that kind of a virtual display for everybody to see. Now, you can also do that yourself as well. Have a little sign-off sheet there saying, hey, can we use this in our social media? Great. Sometimes people like it. Make sure you have permission, though. Let's, let's be respectful of everyone's you know, of everyone's thought process on this and make sure that, you know, some people just want to have privacy. Heck, some, I've had clients that want to send non-disclosure agreements. This is not for them. But you want to make sure that you've got that and use this on the social media side to help empower your brand for your company. And it shows a happy client. And who doesn't want to see that? And it makes you look cutting edge and you're using all the technology available out there. So that's one of the big things. So I think using social media to put this all together and to market that with a little bit of time with their project, you can even put up the latest drawings of that. You've got a very happy client and some great free marketing that doesn't really cost you any money. So again, like I said, be respectful of your clients with that and make sure that that's good. Make sure you're following your own company's uh, social media guidelines. But uh, you can also use this. Um, it's a great time for doing open houses with this as well. What I mean by open houses? Have a, uh, have a dinner. Have a uh, kitchen 101 design night. What do you do? Have, a, have one of your designers be a speaker of how to get started on a kitchen and bath project or whatever your company specializes in. Maybe you're an interior design firm. You know, interior design 101, how do you get started working with an interior designer? Great. Set up your virtual showroom. Have people go over and take a look at it. Advertise that virtual showroom. You'll be impressed with who comes over. Now, one more thing here before we get to our question and answer session. What I want to talk about too is you need to have a little, be prepared for this a little bit. One thing you need to have is some, uh, you know, sanitizing wipes because if you're going to be passing this from person to person, the last thing you want to do is pass skin lice or make something look gross. So what I would do is I would have a box of the, uh, of the uh, like, antibacterial baby wipes to wipe down the whole thing with, and to have some, uh, some uh, like glass cleaner wipes, you know, like the Windex wipes to make sure you keep the glasses down. And then be prepared for every client to sit there and take a minute or two and set the glasses up first so they can get the really best feeling out of this. Because you want to take that time so they can, you know, use it right. If you're not using the VR glasses, or even you can get away with the 3D glasses, it's still not the same feel. But you can get the same thing with the I like to have it where it's just totally immersive. So that's where the VR glasses really help with that. And I think that, keeping it clean, going that, will get you where you want to be. All right, everybody. Well, if you've got any questions too afterwards, you can sure email me as well uh, at eric at fama, F-A-M-A, creative.com. And uh, help, you know, I'll be there to help with you. It's uh, nice to be able to do this and really help people out and uh, get started into a new different technology with uh, kitchen and bath design while you're still using the same program that uh, you've been designing with all along. So it's nice to be able to do that.